Welcome, everyone, to this briefing brought to you by the Israel Defense and Security Forum, IDSF. In Hebrew, our name is Abitronistim. IDSF is the leading Israeli organization advocating for strong national security-oriented policies to guide the state of Israel. We are a movement of more than 20,000 people, including many reserve officers and operators from all branches of the Israel Defense Establishment. Thank you, of course, to all of our viewers and supporters for tuning into this briefing, as well as our previous briefings. Um, right now, I'm on the Gaza border. You can see Jabalia behind us if you look closely. And apologies if we have some uh, a reception, some internet issues. And as always, we are very happy to be joined by Danny Seaman, who is going to uh, provide uh, our updates right now. With that, Danny, I'll, I'll give you the floor. All right. I'm uh, once again in the relief pitcher position here. Um, I was also out in the field today. My son that you all met uh, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, he today completed his military service. I had to take him to the paratroopers base to have him sign out on all his equipment or whatever was left of it. And uh, also there's a group of people uh, from Tennessee, some of them who do follow us here, uh, who contributed um, some uh, equipment to the paratroopers. It was given to them today and they were very happy with it. They'll get a, a personal thank you from them. So I wanna thank you for your contribution. Um, and the soldiers will be receiving it in the field today. Um, so we had to do this makeshift because uh, we couldn't get one of our commanders on. Um, I couldn't get, uh, we're, we're also waiting for our guest today who's having technical problems. Uh, the guest is supposed to be Dr. Ron Schleifer. And uh, Ron, uh, who those of you remember, I, when I first spoke here, I spoke about the book that I wrote um, about the Israel and the foreign media. It was together with Dr. Ron Schleifer, but Ron has written several books. One of them, what we were asking him to talk about today is the advocating propaganda. He is an expert on psyops and psychological warfare. So hopefully he'll be able to get on and, and join us. Um, some of the issue, issues today, um, the battle inside of Gaza continues uh, in the Khan Yunus area. From what we're understanding, the the extent of the tunnels was um, beyond anything we could imagine. Uh, our soldiers are fighting there. And um, hold on one minute. I got a message from Ron. Let's see if he's able to join us. Uh, he says he's on, but I think he's not. Um, do you see him, Moshe? I don't see him. Let me see if I can work it on this end. Okay. Keep talking, and I'll see what I can do with him. All right. So... Um, what we saw there with the tunnels is beyond anything that we even realize. So the, the battle there continues. You know, I, I was talking to my son on, on the way there to his base today, and, and we talk about Israel being the high-tech nation. And uh, everything we've done as a small country and where we've invested in what we've been successful at. And you know what? If the, the, the Arabs in Judea and Samaria, and especially in the Gaza Strip, They've been able to do underneath the Gaza Strip more than the, the New York City um, underground, what they did there with the subway system in New York City in 12 years. They, they've done three, four times more in Gaza. They could have become experts for tunneling around the world, but instead they took it to something negative. I'm being very facetious right now, but they took it to something negative instead of doing something positive from the moment that Israel left the Gaza Strip 20 some years ago. They could have done something very positive there. Uh, I see that Ron will be with us in a moment. Um, we've been successful in reaching him. So the battle there continues. And at the same time, as we spoke about yesterday, they're continuing with the, uh, the situation, um, with the negotiations, with Qatar in Egypt, with the United States. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, still not clear. There does seem to be positive movement on that. And I think this is the essence of it. And one of the reasons we wanted to have uh, Ron with us today uh, was to talk about, because one of the strongest elements in this whole um, negotiation process, besides the whole war with Hamas, uh, they use a lot of the psyops and psychological warfare against Israel, and most certainly in the, uh, um, in the negotiations going on right now. And they're affecting the public. So I thought, and I see Dr. Ron Schleifer is with us, and I think we can move on uh, with him. Can you hear us, Ron? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, Dr. Schleifler is with Ariel University. 
right? Yes, correct. And is a psychological warfare specialist at Ariel University. And Ron and I wrote uh, our book together on the foreign press. I gave my experience on the field and he gave the, um, um, I guess, the psychological aspects of the manipulation of media in the modern um, scene of battle. But um, as I mentioned, as you got on, that what we want to talk about today is more, I would take it anywhere in general, from the psychological aspects of the battle of Hamas and insights you can give us on that, and also especially on the issues pertaining to uh, the manipulation being done around the issue, which is very sensitive to Israelis of the hostages and freeing them. So over to you, Ron. Hi, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Tani, for having me. Um, I'll, uh, I'll start by saying uh, psychological warfare, the, uh, that's led the sharpest, cleanest definition is um, the art and science, how to make your soldier, your own soldiers patriots and the enemy soldiers uh, pacifists. Um, meaning um, those who cannot, for various reasons, don't have the heavy weapons, so they need to have something else. Uh, and if I can use a parable, if you don't have a gun strong enough, big enough, heavy enough to shoot against your enemy, so what you do is you persuade your enemy not uh, to pull the trigger. Um, so Hamas, compared to Israel, in, in a sense, is, uh, it's, a, um, it's an elephant and, uh, and a mosquito. So the question is, um, what can a mosquito do to an elephant? No, basically head to head, uh, that's no match. So the elephant, the mosquito would penetrate into the elephant's ear and start to make him dizzy from, from the inside. And of course, the it's very difficult for the elephant uh, to chase out this mosquito. Now this mosquito, in this sort of uh, in this sort of uh, comparison, is the um, the thought and the motivation to keep Israel out of Gaza uh, or do it half-heartedly or using only a fraction of its uh, of its uh, military uh, potential. Um, Day before yesterday uh, was uh, there were two uh, two very interesting elements on the psychological warfare on behalf of uh, Hamas. One was the release of a uh, well uh, presented uh, video clip showing three uh, young uh, women uh, who are kept. Uh, hostage in uh, in Gaza, presumably in Gaza or or in the Sinai or anywhere else. So what? Uh, so they are um, they clearly look uh, well taken care of, which is a message. They are well dressed, um, relatively speaking, uh, and uh, and very emotional with their appeal towards uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, not to forget them and to set them free. Now it's obvious that they are reading a script and they have rehearsed it because they show emotion. But uh, if you look closely, you see it, it how staged it is. Uh, this is uh, one element. The other element was a uh, document which was found in the uh, one of the uh, field headquarters of Hamas in one of the uh, larger tunnels and saying, uh, what are the psychological warfare um, aims of Hamas? And that is to to uh, press uh, the uh, defense minister Gallant uh, more psychologically, more to, to, to have more effective pressure on him. Uh, another uh, another element is uh, to persuade the Israelis that a uh, competent move uh, in Gaza would uh, not uh, free the hostages, would not get the hostages um, free uh, sooner than with the negotiations. Um, 
the the in general in general uh, the hostage the hostages uh, uh, taking the the taken hostages uh, are a uh, are a uh, brilliant coup on behalf of Hamas because the army is working with one hand and one leg tied together uh, because there's always the fear that uh, that we might uh, harm the hostages. And this is very difficult uh, to conduct warfare. Uh, and they have said that several position. times, saying that uh, we, that hostages that we know they murdered, that they this was done by Israeli. Yes, and they uh, and then they they want in the beginning they announced that that uh, a, a certain hostage uh, was killed by Israelis, and then they released her. So you can imagine the. The, the shift that the family is undergoing from uh, deep sorrow about when their uh, uh, their relative is uh, is deceased is killed, uh, and uh, and then uh, two days later uh, the uh, the kid comes back, and this is a total mental disruption. Um, which is done on purpose. Uh, on they have collected the story or the life story of every hostage, and every uh, day or two they release another item of information about the, this uh, uh, this old man who needs medication. They say oh, we're taking care of our hostages, unlike you Israelis. Who uh, who are mistreating uh, our uh, captives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is to play and erode the Israeli uh, Israeli nervous system and, uh, and and general mood and morale. So the uh, logical aspect of this, they they talk about the, the prisoner exchange. I want to go back to that for a moment. Yes, are they? Do they really care about their prisoners, or is this whole effort an attempt to weaken the resolve of the Israeli society? To what end? Psychologically, uh, yeah, it's uh, it could it um, it could be answered in two ways. Uh, let's take, for example, the uh, the mother of a child uh, who, who she dresses him up uh, as a shaheed with the whole outfit and explosive and says I don't I'm sending him with uh, with all my enthusiasm to his death now this is on the outside in on the inside uh, she's the message is completely uh, different and uh, she wants him alive but as a general uh, uh, um, externally the whole Palestinian society is behind in Gaza at least is behind this message that we don't mind to die. Uh, you care about life and we care about death. This is a very simulating and strong statement, uh, which is designed to persuade the Israelis, soldiers, reservists, and politicians uh, uh, to, uh, to lead them to the thought Look, these guys are completely nuts. There's nothing we can do against them. And this is a very successful ploy, which is done not only in Israel, it's done also by Al-Qaeda, by, by Daesh, ISIS, whatever form uh, and shape uh, they're taking. Um, so uh, whatever our planners are trying to, to plan, to analyze what's going to be our next move, they are paralyzed by such a thought. Come on, uh, this, the, they are not rational. They don't uh, think the way we do. They they will gladly die. We, there has to be a political solution rather than a military solution. And this is exactly what Hamas is after. So how do we combat that in a way? How do we undermine both the efforts they're doing on us and at the same time what they're doing through their own society? And I believe... There, are, there is psychological warfare that Israel is conducting. Can you give us some insights to the actions that Israel is taking and to what end? Um, <clears throat> well, the biggest question of throughout all my career is why Israel is so reluctant to do propaganda and psychological warfare. 
Uh, we're not so good at, admittedly, we're not so good at this field. This is a, this is a given. Um, what we um, the 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 time to persuade has already gone. Whenever the when the first shot was uh, was shot after uh, uh, October seventh. There, there, there's no time for persuasion. This is the time for for action. Now, what psychological warfare is after once the battle has started is to inform the target audience, in this case, Hamas and the civilian population of Gaza, and to a lesser extent, uh, extent to uh, towards the Islamic world and the Western world, to uh, instruct them how to go, how to um, let themselves uh, fall prisoner to our uh, our forces and save their lives. Uh, we uh, instruct them uh, to move to the humanitarian zone. We instruct them to how to surrender, etc. This is the high time of psychological warfare in during battle. Uh, before that, it's, uh, they have invested decades in persuading us that they are unbeatable and the whole Gaza Strip is going to be a death trap should Israel dare to move, uh, set a foot in, inside Gaza. Now, that is past. They failed and we, uh, and we let them for decades to rearm themselves, and, but that is gone. Now uh, we're looking at what to do um, throughout the uh, the battlefield during battle, and we also need to take care of what's going to be the messages and what we want to instruct them to do after the fighting is uh, is over. Now uh, the trouble is that uh, during battle the military commanders have no energy or time or attention to spare uh, to such uh, important moves because they need to take care of, um, of defeating the enemies and, and, uh, and that's the, the top priority. Uh, Hamas, um, in, in, um, in a stark contradiction to, uh, to this, they need to stay alive they need to persuade Israel to surrender. And the way they do it, they provide information, little bits, tiny bits of information every day in order to force the Israeli um, high command and the prime minister and the government uh, to, have them a, to have them under constant pressure on their cortex as look at the, uh, first of all, your priorities are wrong. First of all, you have to, uh, you have to take care of the hostages and free the hostages, and you have to strike a deal. Now, we know that if there is a deal that would lead to the, uh, to the uh, secession of, of uh, combat, there would be any, it would be very difficult to resume the combat, at least in the South. Um, and this is the game. This is this is uh, this is how it works. We I was saying, now, yeah. So I would say we were talking now about Gaza, and you mentioned that there's certain type of warfare that happens before the war, and then there's what happens during the war. And though we are engaged in exchanges of fire in uh, with Hezbollah, uh, we're in a way before the war. There is there any comments you can make on what's happening in that uh, that area? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> um, the the psychological warfare uh, um, aspect of the struggle again or the fight against Hezbollah naturally did not start in October seventh. It started uh, decades ago, uh, and it started in the late eighties. Um, and then, in a brilliant campaign of fifteen years, they chased us out of the security zone and inside Israel. Um, now, you have to understand that uh, in the Arab world, whenever you sign some sort of a ceasefire um, or, uh, or any, any sort of agreement, 
you start to break the agreement right away, but not in a stark way, not in a ostentatious way, but a small step. And this is basically the strategy of the Islamic uh, Islamic warfare, step by step. Uh, I mean, you don't break the uh, the uh, agreement because somebody just uh, posted a poster or a or or, or dug a foxhole uh, where he shouldn't have, and then later on, then the foxhole is strengthened, and then it becomes a position. And then it comes. It has an underground uh, um, a, um, construct, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now Hezbollah has developed a uh, a unique way of psychological warfare. It's uh, it's unique because um, it's uh, it either came from Iran. And we should not underestimate Iran, and we should not un underestimate the Shiites, and we should not underestimate the Arabs in general. Uh, the uh, the strategy of Hezbollah was to say that in combat, what matters most in combat is the footage that comes out of this combat. It doesn't matter how many. Israelis uh, uh, were killed. It doesn't matter how many uh, of Hezbollah uh, are killed. It doesn't matter what the damage was done. What matters is the footage of the operation. And then the footage is, is, uh, is broadcast uh, day in, day out with various comments and various uh, edits and various, and combined with other uh, other clips, and again and again and again. So we thought very much like the American army in Vietnam uh, after the McNamara uh, uh, doctrine of um, uh, what's it called? I forgot. Uh, I forgot the term. The body count, which was how it was popularly known. The body count. The matters how many, how many uh, VC uh, or Hezbollah, for that matter, we killed. And that was that that was a mistake then and it's a mistake now because they don't care how many of them uh, uh, get killed um, in battle because um, it's not they are so um, uh, they are so uh, um, so happy uh, to to die at least what they declare. But well, the instinct uh, to be alive is is, uh, is across all human race, unless you indoctrinate them for a very early age, and it matters in a few. It happens in a few cases, not in all of them, and um, and uh, a, so the footage, as I was saying. Um, now Israelis saw that. First of all, the soldiers in Lebanon saw that because it was uh, within uh, television reception. And then they increased the television broadcast power, the, um, uh, the radio waves, and the, even the uh, inhabitants of Haifa, uh, the northern city in Israel, uh, could watch it. And this the was, way this they- was the period, This was at the time when Israel was in, still in South Lebanon, you mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then, of course, they change the messages. They don't want to uh, occupy uh, Israel. They don't want to free Jerusalem. All they want is uh, to free the security zones. Uh, this is the stage, uh, the stage uh, doctrine, and the PLO also has this, uh, 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 also had such stage doctrine. Uh, Hamas they does trained. not have. They, they were trained Sorry. back in the day. The, the yes. same uh, terrorist elements by the, the Soviets and by uh, those who trained the North Vietnamese. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so yeah. We refer to that. yeah, we refer to that in our, uh, in our book. Um, Arafat was trained by, uh, uh, by General Giap, uh, the head chief of staff of the Northern uh, uh, Vietnamese Army, who managed uh, to persuade America uh, to back down from Vietnam, even though after the Tet Offensive in 1968 and, and, and all of that, uh, militarily, America won, but not politically. And Same here, what is important, 
And what is important to note, and Hezbollah has inherited it, so to speak, from the PLO, and Hamas is also using this, is that uh, the uh, the maxim of General Giap is that it doesn't matter what happened, that we didn't fight the real battle of the, of the war in the jungles of North and South Vietnam. The real war took place on the streets of Washington. And this is something that Westerners need to consider very, very seriously. Uh, the body count doesn't matter in such uh, in such battles because we're not talking about hundreds of thousands. We're talking about one from a village or two from a neighborhood. Um, so the, what matters is the political aspect. And the Hezbollah is, uh, is working uh, on the international arena, they have a they have a very broad network in all the Western countries, along with the uh, along with the uh, Arab world and 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 uh, Asia, and uh, wherever there is a Shiite community, lots of such in Africa, etc. So what they do, they communicate with all of them, and uh, just to say in uh, in brackets is um, in Hezbollah is an international Iranian secret organization. And the Hezbollah we're talking about is just the Lebanese branch of this organization. So they have their backing uh, of the Iranian government. And so basically what Israel should concentrate on is should concentrate on Iran to persuade Iran uh, uh, to pull back from Lebanon and from Gaza, but what, this is that, far that's more what complicated. Trying to do right now, I'm, I'm unfortunately have to uh, cut in here right. because okay. we have uh, uh, half an hour to hold people and give them the time. We could have continued talking on this for hours, which we, yep. you, and I usually do. But I don't want to take uh, away from people's time. Moshe, turning it back over to you. Thank you, Ron. Danny, very welcome. Good luck with all of this. Sharing all of this, Bye. very much appreciated. A very uh, new perspective for us to hear on these briefings. Thank you, of course, to all of our viewers and all of our supporters for tuning in. I did have a lieutenant colonel sitting next to me. We were going to try to get him on, but we've run out of time. Um, so until tomorrow, um, everyone should stay safe, stay strong, take care. We'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time. All the best. <laughs>